Howdy out there in machine shop land. This is Tubal Kane again. Today to, to discuss uh, another application of the Atlas Craftsman lathe and that is uh, the use of the milling attachment. Now there's a lot of you guys out there that do not have a uh, bridge port. You don't have the room for it or maybe you don't have the money and uh, you're, you do have one of these uh, milling attachments or maybe you can get one and you can do light milling and keyways and things like that with that uh, attachment. It's not 100% satisfactory but yet it, it is a usable tool. Uh, you have to take light cuts. It's not a cheap tool. It is well made. It's just that the general principle of adding something on there in place of the compound rest and the lack of rigidity and so on is a, is a, a factor uh, that uh, limits its use somewhat and of course it's going to be for small pieces and sh short pieces. Here's a nice view of the attachment while it's on the bench and the bottom of that of course looks exactly the same as the bottom of the compound. This is rather heavy so it can absorb some of the vibration but still you know it weighs probably 20 pounds. I'll call this the vise. The vise can be uh, rotated a full 180 degrees and right underneath the vise here, of course, we've got another dovetail, just like we did on the lathe. That's how it's constructed, and we got the gibbs here, as I pointed out before. And an Acme screw right in here for our vertical feed, which I called the Z. On the back side, it's got uh, quite a, a nice cast iron rib, two of them. To strengthen it and give you rigidity. Let me know if anybody has one of these or uses it out there. Give me a little uh, note. No questions please, but I'm glad to, to hear your comments. Don't have time uh, for the many, many questions that I get. Alright, now I'm going to put this back on the, the Atlas lathe. In order to use the uh, milling attachment, you have to remove the compound rest, and that is done simply by uh, loosening these two bolts. And uh, don't lose these little pins. They're hardened dowel pins that are ground at an angle, but there should be two of them included with your uh, attachment there. And if there isn't, uh, you can just uh, swap them from one to the other because they are the same. Now when you install those, make sure, there's a dovetail under here, that uh, the angle faces up in this manner. Don't lose those, or you'll have to make a pair of them. Now uh, after you install uh, this, it can swing at different angles. Probably the most uh, common angle is, is that which is uh, going to be 90 degrees and we're reading it right here on the um, little protractor. This reads 90 degrees right now and then you would tighten the two screws. Make sure you get them snugged up real good so you don't have any vibration. See the fact that it hangs over somewhat here from the uh, cross slide uh, uh, makes it lack some rigidity. can also be used in that position if you're going to do uh, end cutting. I doubt if you would ever bring it over into this other position. This thing also came with uh, two jaws. One has uh, V's in it to hold round stock and then the other one is just flat steel. Often those are lost. If you don't have them you can uh, make yourself a pair. There's a hand wheel on the top. One full revolution is a hundred thousandths. There's a little graduated dial up here just like there is on the uh, cross slide of the lathe. There's a lock here so that after you make your adjustment and you get your uh, vise where you want it well, I go ahead and lock it the same way as you would on a milling machine and this just tightens up the gib. That's all it does. It's a gib lock. Make sure that's backed off when you uh, uh, 
move it. Now there's two set screws here also, one on the back side, and this can also be tilted. It's really a neat little uh, device. There's a protractor on there as well that you can read right here. Pretty well made and I think it was expensive when it was new. I of course bought it used like everything else I have. I don't believe this one was ever used until the other day. I bought it over eBay from a fellow machinist. On the Bridgeport mill we move the work or the tables in uh, three directions which we call axes X, Y, and Z axis. So let's uh, uh, represent uh, using the milling attachment on the lathe that the longitudinal feed is the x-axis and the cross feed or in and out is the y-axis and uh, moving the uh, work which is in the vise vertically will be the z-axis similar to what the knee does on the uh, Bridgeport mill. So we got the x, y, and z axis. In order to hold a, a end mill in the lathe you must remove the three jaw and four jaw chuck and uh, it must be held, the tool, cutting tool, must be held either in a collet or Atlas also had a special uh, adapter with a drawbar that uh, would hold uh, the end mills. Now the reason for that is that an end mill is hardened and so are the three jaw chuck jaws and uh, it just won't grip and in a real heavy cut it's going to helix its way out and dig into the work so I've got this mounted with my 3C collets and there's a hand wheel on the other end you can see maybe not quite see it here and that seems to be pretty satisfactory and I've got uh, collets that go up to I believe it's half inch to accommodate the small end mills that I might use but remember that you're, it is not satisfactory to hold this in a three jaw chuck nor is it satisfactory to hold it in a drill chuck that you might put in the uh, headstock. You never want to use a drill chuck anyway uh, because side, they're not built for side thrust. One other thing in order to feed in this direction toward the headstock, all of our feeding is going to be done with the carriage. There is no other provision to do that because the compound is now removed. So in order to locate your carriage and uh, increasing, to increase your feed, uh, you will need uh, to account for that some way or another. So what I use is either the uh, carriage stop which is graduated in thousands of an inch so you can uh, back this off however many thousands you want let's say it was going to be a ten thousandth uh, cut could back it off ten thousands and then run your carriage up against that after you make that cut then you could uh, move this another ten thousands bring your carriage up against that and uh, make your next cut always locking the carriage while you're making the cuts with the carriage lock. Now another way that I found works real well is uh, using my Mighty Mag indicator holder and I put that right on uh, the bed. It's a magnet and you can see that we're going to get a reading. I'll show you a better view of that later. That's a real big indicator on there that shows up real nice. We're at the wrong angle to see it. But that would be a very accurate way of advancing the uh, carriage and then locking it when you start your cut. This is mighty tight quarters in here to work and to, to see your work uh, as you're making your cuts. Also it's very tight quarters for me to try to uh, set the camera up and uh, get, stay out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. But uh, after you take your uh, three jaw chuck off, make sure that you put the thread protector on there. That's this uh, collar device right here. And that serves two purposes. One is that it uh, uh, protects the thread should you run something into that uh, that uh, hardened thread. You don't want to damage that. And secondly, uh, 
as you unscrew this, this helps you to get the uh, adapter out of there without banging on it through the spindle. It's nice uh, not to have a three-jaw chuck on there anyway because they're so cumbersome and large. Uh, if you were trying to, to look in here as you make your cut, it would be in the way. So this is uh, the preferred way to do it. When you're using the milling attachment, put your feed uh, reverse lever in the neutral position. You don't need the, uh, the gear train running. Uh, the, the noise is annoying as well as you got general wear on it and all of your feeding is going to be done by hand. I suppose uh, a longitudinal feed could be uh, uh, an automatic feed, but you know the, the feed rate on, on an atlas lathe on the carriage is way too fast for that. Now as far as spindle speed, I'm running mine at, uh, for these small end mills, at, I believe it was uh, 805 uh, RPM it is a pretty good speed for, for general purpose cutting with small end mills and that's what we're going to be doing is strictly small end mills. The attachment is turned around backwards and I'm going to move the camera around to the back side here momentarily but I've got a piece of quarter inch flat stock mounted in the vise and I'm just going to attempt to square off the end. I've got a 5 16 end mill in there, quarter inch thick stock. And we're just going to feed it in and out a couple times till we clean that up. Now the projects that I'm making right now, well they're not really projects, I'm just doing some sample cuts to give you some ideas of the versatility of the tool. Well that didn't work so well with the camera around the back so I'm, I'm still around the front. And we're just going to take a cut right across that uh, seal. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there. And I've already moved my carriage in. Take about ten thousand saws. Don't feed it too fast. All I'm doing is squaring up the work. You can still see the saw marks on the material. I'll back it off now and see what it looks like. cut a, an angle on this if it was necessary by turning the attachment at an angle. It's cutting pretty well. This is probably the simplest form of milling. If the material was wider or thicker, we could make several passes back and forth across it the same as you would on a vertical mill. Do not attempt to climb mill if you're using the side of the end mill. Do not climb mill. <clears throat> Perhaps I should explain that later, what climb milling and conventional milling are.